This is going to be episode seven and a half, only because I just want to kind of expand on the last episode and provide some more examples, just in case it was a bit confusing. So, here in Photoshop, I just made three quick paragraphs, and they might not be the prettiest, but they can demonstrate what you can do. So, if just say we're designing a website, and at certain points we want our text to look like any one of these, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now you don't have to use Photoshop. Some people like to use Illustrator, some people like to use Fireworks, GIMP, whatever you want, just as long as you're comfortable working with it. Or you don't even have to use another program to design. You can design right from the browser and just keep plugging in more code until you get what you want. So for right now, let's just stick to these three paragraphs and I'm just gonna go into my HTML and I'm gonna make three paragraphs here and I'll give them all a class name so the first one I'll make uh, first the second one I'll make it have a class of second and the third one I'll give it a class of third we should really be using IDs here because they're not going to be anywhere else on the page but we'll just use ID we'll just use classes it doesn't really matter in this example so let's start with the first one. We'll create uh, a new declaration in CSS, just telling it to target all classes that have the first. And so let's take a look at the things that we have to set here. So I'll pull up my character panel over here. And for this first one here, you'll notice that the font is Arial. So let's go in here and say font family and we'll set that to Arial. Uh, and Helvetica is pretty similar, so I'm gonna, just gonna have it fall back to Helvetica, and if it really can't find anything, whatever sans serif font is available. Let's see what else. Um, the font size is 15 pixels right here. Font size, 15 pixels. And uh, if you're using Photoshop 2, and you have it set to points, all you have to do is go into your preferences. Let me go there. And from your preferences here, you're going to click on uh, units and rulers, I believe it is. Yeah, and uh, up here in type, you're gonna change from points to pixels, and that will set that to pixels. Or you can just type in CSS with points. It doesn't really matter. And uh, the last thing we have to do here, or the second to last thing I should say, um, it is italic. So let's go in here and say font variant. Oh no, sorry, not variant, uh, font style and italic. And the last thing is the color. So in Photoshop, if you have set the color ready, there is this little hexadecimal code down here. And a hexadecimal code is just it's six digits, and any of the digits can be from zero to nine or from A to F. And whenever you're gonna type a hexadecimal code, you always put the pound sign before it and then plop it right in. And uh, while I'm on that topic, I should say, if you don't have uh, any way of getting a hexadecimal code, my favorite is colorpicker.com. And this is pretty much like Photoshop. You can just uh, drag around the little marker here and select the hue from the right. And then as soon as you get the color that you want, the hex code is right on top. And you can just copy and paste that wherever you need it. So that should be it for the first paragraph. And if I go and preview this, you can see, uh, here, let me, there we go. It's uh, pretty much the same. Now we'll go on to the next paragraph here and uh, you'll notice that this one is Georgia. So uh, second, we'll set the font family to Georgia. And Times New Roman is, I guess, a little bit similar. So we'll fall back to Times. And uh, yeah, we'll say Times New Roman and then Times because I like Times New Roman a little bit better 
So if that's available, I would use that first before having to go to times. And uh, since Georgia is a serif font, we're not going to type sans serif at the end. We'll type serif. The next thing we have to do is set the font size to 13 pixels. Then we're going to set the color. So we'll go right into our color panel and copy the hex code again. And you'll also notice that uh, the line spacing or the letting, whichever one you want to call it, is a bit taller here than the normal font. So I'll show you. Normally it looks like this. But for this example, I wanted it to not be as bunched up. So I decided to make it 23 pixels. Now the way you actually set this in CSS is with line height. And we can just set this to 23 pixels. And now if we go preview that, we see it's pretty much the same thing. The only thing that would be different here is of course, in Photoshop I have a smaller window, so it has more lines. If I were to do that here, you'll see. But it's basically the same thing here. So now let's do the, now let's just do the uh, last paragraph here, and I'll move out my character window. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's courier. So I'll go back in here and we'll target the third class and say font family courier. And I don't have any font in mind that I just wanted to fall back to, so I'll just say any mono space font will do. And um, other than that, we have a 13 pixel font size. Set that. Uh, we have this ugly greenish color, so we'll just copy the hex code again and put that in there. Then uh, we have a line height of 15 pixels. And it is bold. I don't know if you can tell, but up in here I have it set to bold. So I'll go do that as well. Font weight is bold. And uh, the last thing is it's also underlined. So text decoration is underlined. And if we go ahead and preview this, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, just so you know, I might as well mention this, and this problem is only related to Photoshop, so if you're using any other image editor, you're not going to necessarily have this problem, most likely. Um, but Photoshop just has absolutely terrible anti-aliasing. And what that means is uh, when you go into uh, your uh, your little font window here and um, on top you get this little drop down menu uh, it may be set to sharp or crisp whatever you've used before but you can see that if you just go through these different options and you probably can't see the change uh, through this video but the font does change just a little bit for each different one that you choose and the problem there is just Photoshop is terrible at displaying fonts in general so you really have to preview it via the browser to see how any uh, any operating systems will actually display the font. So if you if you ever think that a font just looks, you know, terrible or it's not thick enough or anything like that, your best bet is to first just take a look at it in your browser to make sure that it's not what you want. So I hope this has helped and you can kind of see some more examples of how we create these different styles just based on our design. So uh, in the next episode, we will go into uh, more box effects, such as backgrounds, borders, and stuff like that.